This is a project I worked on a long time ago, probably 12 years ago. Um, it's based on a book called Build an EDM um, by Robert Langolis. And uh, it's actually based on a series of articles in the Home Shop Machinist. Um, and this is just a compilation of those articles and it, and it steps you through the process of building a EDM machine for electrical discharge machining um, or removing metal by spark erosion as it says right on the title there. I guess I wanted to talk about my my version of this and, and do a little walkthrough of where some of my parts came from. Because in some ways, where the parts came from for my EDM is more interesting than, than the EDM itself. So there are a few components in the in my home-built EDM that uh, were surplus or scavenged from other places. Um, there's a few, there's a couple things, the main components that, that are needed um, is a transformer. Um, this is a actually an old microwave oven transformer. Um, the primary coil is still there. I removed the secondary coil. Um, a microwave oven transformer usually puts out 1.5 kilovolts. This is now um, rewired with 18 gauge solid core wire um, to output 60 volts um, uh, under load. Uh, the other thing that I realized was going to be expensive that I, that I wasn't uh, anticipating was the um, a power resistor and, and my power resistor is this back here this coil and that coil is actually from a, um, a dryer that I found on the side of the road um, and it just happened to be the, the correct resistance for for the for acting as a power resistor for this and um, as you can see I have a fan that blows right on it and, and there's an exit um, out the back um, to, to keep that to keep that cool and the fan actually came from a microwave oven also so both the transformer and the fan came from a microwave oven um, down in the corner here there's a smaller transformer um, to power some of the electronic circuits and that actually came from a discarded radio um, that I found on the side of the road um, so I, I repurposed that um, some of the connectors this is actually a connector from a that was scavenged from an old computer. Um, there's another one down here from a, a keyboard to a computer. So as we come in closer, we see a couple of circuit boards, one for the control circuit. Um, nowadays, um, the, the control side of this circuit board would actually probably be made with an Arduino, because that's, that's the way things are, it seems. Um, if you look at the back side, the traces on that board, those are actually hand traced from a schematic that was in the book. Um, so they're, I hand traced them with a, with a Sharpie, um, and then liquid etched that, um, and that, that's true for both of these circuit boards. Um, uh, this was, I made this before, um, I knew anything about, uh, transfer, toner transfer methods, or, or even had the dream of owning a, a CNC machine. So on the other circuit board here, we have the capacitors. Um, a couple larger capacitors in the back there, and then some, a couple of um, diode bridges or rectifier circuits um, in the back there. Um, I guess one last scavenged item was a fuse holder, and probably the fuse is probably scavenged also. That's actually a slow blow fuse from a microwave oven transform or a microwave oven. Coming around to the front, I actually went out and bought all these switches and, and knobs, but the uh, so we have all the controls for the EDM here, and you have a place for the motor where a stepper motor hooks up. So the other major component of the EDM machine is is something to drive the electrode into the into the work material. And as you see here, we have a stepper motor, uh, a shaft, which is driving shaft, which is actually driving a a square tube. There's this piece of square brass tubing with a, another piece of brass tube, square brass tubing inside, and that's that's basically turns this into a linear actuator. This is a side that pushes in and out of the um, out of the material. Um, a couple of electrodes that I have, I've made um, this one a little bigger diameter. This one's a smaller diameter. Basically, it's a so I've. This is my latest cleaning up of this project. I've been 3D printing some of the some of the parts. So I have my electrode holders are made out of plastic, and they just slide right into the 
into the tubing on the end here. And there's actually there's a small port on the sides of these um, to to be able to put the the coolant right in inside the um, inside the electrode, which helps flushing out some of the some of the chips as as it's machining away. Again, with I 3D printed these holders for for keeping the the brass tube aligned, and I also 3D printed this um, little coupling. Um, it's a it's a solid coupling for that. And then the other item that I made was this uh, aluminum uh, backbone for the whole thing. It's a it's a casting, a sand casting that I made, um, and then I machined all the surfaces to make sure that everything was aligned properly. And one more uh, plastic 3D printed part is the motor mount. Um, that helps get everything uh, mounted to the backbone um, so we can do some EDMing. So talking a little bit more about the, the electrodes, um, like I said, they're just brass tubing um, and in this case they're held in place by by a 3d printed part um, so when it when it's new it looks just like a piece of brass tubing um, and these are two pieces of brass tubing that I just had laying around one of the, one of the electrodes is a little bent so the holes that I was making wasn't weren't quite perfect but as you can see it, the, the EDM will only cut where where the metal touches so if you EDM with a round tube you'll get a round hole with the center not cut out um, so that's that's what's what's illustrated there with that cut i um, in this test piece the other i also edm this through hole in here and when that cut was done i was left with the two pieces the the center actually fell out and that's not perfectly round because things weren't aligned quite properly or or as it's falling out it'll tip and and actually machine the side of the of the centerpiece, but that's kind of the idea. If you're if you're EDMing a um, a tap, if you broke a tap into a part, you can you can EDM down through through the tap and knock out that centerpiece, and then use the hole with an easy out or some other method to uh, to remove that tap. So a couple of other things that I uh, was practicing with or trying out with my EDM recently, um, I had an a hard drive magnet, uh, so a neodymium hard drive magnet, and I cut the center of that magnet out. And when I so here's I'll, I'll I'll put a little picture of what it looked like before and after, but here's the the final magnet, and, and it's, it hasn't lost any of its magnetic properties. And I also happen to have that magnet sitting on a on a utility knife blade. And I cut right through that. And if you've ever tried to drill through a utility knife blade, it's that's actually a tough thing to do with an EDM. It goes pretty quick. So as I'm using the EDM, I need something to hold the the electrode and the uh, well, which is the electrode goes into this part. And then I need something to hold this backbone over the over the material being cut. So I actually just mount it to this old drill press. So here I have the EDM actuator mounted to the stand with a C-clamp and then I have a small vise, cheap blip vise um, that I use to hold my work pieces and then to keep the water contained I put actually this is a mixed nut container where all the nuts are gone put that in there then I can drive the tool down into the workpiece and all the water will be contained in the upside down jar. Um, having that upside down jar allows me to uh, easily work with the with the pieces without having the, the container in my way. Um, and then the other thing that I do quite often is I'll hot glue this either down to um, a platform or the platform here or to um, something heavy like a brick that way if, if the EDM sticks to the um, to the workpiece it doesn't lift the whole thing up as as you're doing the work so that's why there's a little bit of hot glue residue on the bottom there